Hey everyone, welcome back to the True Blue Podcast. I am your host, Zach Sucardi. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Podcast True Blue. Here we are for session 20. It is October 17th. It's a Saturday, s -s -s Saturday. And it is uh, fucking, fucking 241. In the afternoon, in the afternoon. So. It's uh, an afternoon recording. I usually record in the evening. Um, but fuck it, right? It's Saturday, you know? want to get a little, a little recording and shit. I haven't done an episode in a while, so I'm happy to be uh, to be here. It is, as I said, October 17th, and I, I believe today is National Edge Day, which is a straight-edge, um, I guess, holiday in the straight-edge community. They celebrate their straight-edge... Um, beliefs and um that the whole subculture today um and i think it's awesome i used to be straight edge i was straight edge till i was about 20 years old and uh i still listen to a lot of straight edge hardcore music from back in the day even some even some new shit so um still love the music and fuck you know the stoners they get 420 you know <laughs> might, as well, might as well give the fucking straight edge kids a day and in fact, I like their day um, because it's in. Uh, I like their I like their their day placement a little better than the than the four twenty because it's in fucking fall, right? Fucking by Halloween, that's a perfect straight edge, you know. Like big ups to the straight edge community for choosing that day because I mean they got you know the stoners could not wait <laughs> until October, that's for sure. They definitely could not so. Big ups to the straight edge folks because I mean it's a, it's like the happy medium it's sweatshirt weather which is probably a big thing is wearing hooded sweatshirts is huge in the hardcore community straight edge everything so that's probably part of it but I mean it's awesome um, I uh, went to an edge day like they had like a um, I guess a fest or something um, it was up kind of by Boston back in 2000 so 20 fucking years ago American Nightmare played and um in my eyes it was like their last show there these are uh hardcore bands from Boston in my eyes is straight edge and I think American Nightmare started out as that but, but they excuse me but they did not end that way anyway um yeah it was it was cool I mean just going to shows and stuff was just awesome and I think that weekend that we went I went to Cheers I'm pretty sure I went to, I'm pretty sure I went to Cheers, and Cheers is, like, my favorite show. Literally. I knew so much about that show. I had the Cheers board game. I used to watch it as a kid, like, every night at 11 o'clock or 11.30 um, when when it was syndicated. And then I, you know, I got hip to it, like, maybe the, like, 1991 or something. So, like, one of the last years that it was on the air. But anyway, uh, yeah, so I went, to, I went to Cheers. It was fucking awesome. Fucking awesome. I still have a mug from there. It's so dope. So fucking dope. Um, I definitely didn't didn't drink beer. I was straight edge when I when I went, so there was plenty of diet coke in that in that mug. But yeah, straight edge is so dope. I I was so grateful to be straight edge. I learned a lot. You know, I grew up in a household where there was alcoholism and drug use. Um, so um, more alcoholism, to be honest. But um, so I just saw that and was like, nope. I see all the pain and all the all the how it shits on everything. I'll pass. It's a big pass. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was an easy, easy decision for me. And I just love that there was music that was heavy and aggressive. And they're fucking singing about being straight edge, you know, keeping a clear mind. And there were all kinds of straight edge music. There was all kinds of, you know, a, a wide spectrum. There was the positive stuff. There was the aggressive, we're going to fuck you up stuff. And it, it all kind of had a place. You know, it, it all had this aggressive, passionate thing that uh, I really just gravitated towards. Um, it was just kind of just cool, you know. Um, I was just very much taken by it because, you know, getting into punk rock and hardcore is so amazing. And then there's a sect of it where there's straight edge. You know, they all sing about being straight edge and all this stuff. I just was so in love and just thought how, how fucking cool. Um, so that it's National Edge Day, I just want to kind of shout it out. There's so much straight edge music that I love still with, you know, um, Earth Crisis and fucking um, uh, 
uh, shit, Warzone, like, you know, there's some great straight edge music, some great shit, um, across the board. And there's a, there's a song by Bane called, uh, Count Me Out, and it's awesome, because it's not, like, all in your face, straight edge, it even just sort of mentions it at the end, but it just all, it sort of talks about, like, you know, growing and changing, and it's okay to change, you know, if you don't want to be straight edge anymore, that's cool, no big deal. Just don't talk shit about it, and, you know, it's all good. You know, people change. Um, and when I was straight edge, I, I remember loving that, that like that whole message. And the song's so fucking good, too. Bane is, is fucking awesome. Uh, the song is called Count Me Out. It's on Holding This Moment. It's like an EP. It's one of their, I guess, their like first official release, maybe. Like, um, you know, the first EP. But it's so dope. Uh, so, yeah, I just want to shout out the whole straight edge thing. I think it's it's awesome. I'm not straight edge anymore. I smoke cannabis, but um, I still love getting high and listening to straight edge music. <laughs> you know, it's just so it's so passionate. It's awesome. And I also, hey, I wanted to shout out my homie Jerry. Today's his birthday. I've known this dude since I was like 14, so um, I always try to hit him up on his birthday. You know, you get one day a year, and Jerry's is today, and he's such a solid dude. He's a, a fireman, I believe, still in the Bronx, and he's in the military. So he's always, like, all over the world. But uh, I look up to him. He's, like, one of my friends who, like, um, he's very much himself, and I really appreciate that about him. Uh, we don't get to talk often, but when we do, we can talk for hours. Like, I think the last time we talked was maybe, like, two years ago, three years ago. And we talked, I think, for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> he was working so you know when you're a fireman I think you have to live there and shit so he was just you know chilling and stuff so uh, but he's just one of those friends where we don't talk a lot but it's all good and when we do talk it's so dope you know we like definitely you know get to get to connect so happy birthday to him I'll be calling him later saying what's up and I wanted to shout out also all my homies and all my friends on Instagram posting all this uh, all these great pictures of out of outdoor shit you know, going for hikes and stuff. I love seeing it. I love seeing the leaves and all the different colors and stuff. You know, from my homies here in New Mexico to, you know, back in Jersey and, you know, all over the world or, you know, all over this country. But in large part back in New Jersey, it's really cool to see. You know, I would typically visit in uh, in the fall season because it's just so great back there. It's so green that when things change colors, it's just so great. Like when you... When you can hit that kind of peak time, sometimes it can be a month. Sometimes it can be 13 days, literally, because it can go right from summer to the winter back in Jersey. So um, I'm really, you know, I've been just enjoying that, seeing some some cool photos on Instagram of some some outdoor shit. So that's that's been pretty cool. Um, and, uh, you know, I uh, was talking to my mom last night. Which was awesome. We talked for like over two hours, which was so fucking awesome. You know, if you still have a parent that's around, call them up. I mean, shit, you only get one set of parents. Some people don't get that. They get just one. They get none. They get a grandma. They get an aunt. They get a stranger. You know, they get a neighbor, like whoever. But reach out to that person, you know. And I, I honestly, I love talking to my mom. I, you know, it's cool to get to know her, like, as a person. Um, just hear about, you know, her life and ask her questions and, um, it was cool. It was like we were hanging out. Um, it was like we were just chilling, um, and just 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 you know just catching up and stuff. Um, my mom did tell me she's actually is voting for Kanye. She's gonna write his name in, um, unless it's already on the ballot. My mom, she's like kind of punk rock with the whole political thing. She's not gonna pick the lesser of two evils. She usually votes green, like the independent party. But my mom likes Kanye because he's young and like. You know, he's positive and talks about God a little bit. My mom's not terribly religious either, but, she, you know, she's just sort of like she's down the vote and she votes all the other shit. I think she voted for weed to be legalized in New Jersey. So that's pretty dope. Um, but I just got a, I just got a, got a kick out of that, that my mom seriously is voting for Kanye West. Um, and it's just sort of um, something I, I always looked up to with my mom. She never just went with what was cool or, or what was anti or anything. She definitely found her own path. So that's just uh, something I wanted to share because it really speaks to me. I don't really want to talk politics, but that's just something that really speaks to me. 
Um, and I love Kanye. He put out a song yesterday called Na Na Na. Shout out to my friend John. We, we were just talk, just talking about it. It's it's fucking awesome. It's great fucking beat intro, like the energy with it, the lyrics, and even like the art. The cover art is so dope. I gotta hand it to Kanye. I've 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 been a fan and consistent. I've had friends kind of go na nah, na nah, after a couple albums. You know, they just kind of said no, I can't. You know, and then all his other shit, people just can't. But I'm still such a fan, so. It's a really dope song. Check it out. It's called Na Na Na. Na Na Na. <laughs> and I also want to shout out my friend uh, Kristen and my friend Kevin. My dog Lulu had a little bit of, of uh, oral surgery. She had some teeth pulled. And uh, they were helping me like answer questions and kind of like giving me peace about it and calming me down. I, You know, telling me it's more of a normal a normal procedure. But I just wasn't... Uh, I wasn't... Uh, ready for it because I is my first time like having a dog and like taking care of one and I just love her so fucking much that I was just worried but um, they really helped me out over these past couple weeks just answering questions and giving me a lot of info so I just want to shout out my friend Kristen and my friend Kevin uh, and, and Lulu's doing great she's so fucking strong I like seriously I, I like look how well she's been doing since she you know had her surgery and stuff and just you know the recovery and everything um and i'm like damn for uh, for a mini poodle you're a fucking strong ass girl so um yeah it's fucking dope um and hey halloween's coming and I, i'm fucking so excited it's on saturday i'm gonna try to do a halloween episode where i talk about all things halloween and music and misfits and type of negative and you know halloween costumes i've had over the years so um look out for that it'll probably come out in the next uh well, you know, next two weeks, definitely before Halloween. So, um, and I'm also going to do towards the end of the year, um, um, I'm going to do 20 albums for 2020. And usually I don't think I could do 20, but this year I can. And there's a lot of good music. And I'm almost surprised every time I think about it, I'm like, okay, there's these bands I know that, you know, have really good albums. And I keep thinking, like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit. And before you know it, I'm like, easy, I can do 20. So, uh, look out for that. I'll be doing that towards the end of the year. All right. So I want to get into the self-care part of this podcast. And I decided to talk about um, picking your battles. The idea of picking your battles. Not just fighting everyone, but actually picking them. Choosing your battles. And for me, this is something that I, you know, I can remember being like, fuck that. I want to fight everything. Let's fucking fight. Fuck that. If I'm right, I'm right. Listen up. Listen here. You know, and I was ready to fight the world or whatever. You know, all that pride and ego shit. And I've just learned over time in every every different situation, whether it's a relationship, work environment, friendship, family, to kind of, you know, learn how to pick, pick and choose your battles because overall I want to attain peace and I want to have, you know, a good, happy life. And sometimes picking your battles is huge and it's it's a lifesaver so i really wanted to talk about it um so what i did is i found this article and it went over like kind of some tips about picking your battles so i'm going to read through some of them and just kind of comment on them thought it would be kind of cool all right so first one here it says only fight uh, about issues that are truly important and that's huge i mean there's so much bullshit out there that you can pick and you know and like you can f- fucking fight over especially like i know like Sometimes with sports or, or football, it can get a little stupid with people arguing, and I'm just like, fuck it. I'm going to fucking fight over this, someone's opinion. Um, so I like that. It um, It's one of those things where you want to ask yourself, will I care about this tomorrow? You know, and I, a lot of times when I've been able to sort of just hold back or just, you know, take the high road, the next day I do feel better or maybe – relieved is the word because um it's it's nice because usually when i respond and i'm like yeah take that fuck that i'm fighting you know i kind of feel a little jerky the next day or it just doesn't feel as freeing i think i think that's the word i'm looking for as freeing so um definitely a part of this whole um self-care tip is you know freedom you know is picking your your uh your battles because we all want to have freedom and and uh and peace all right, so this next one here says, pause for the cause, review your motivation. Ask yourself, is this really something worth fighting over? 
you know, if you're stressed at work or finances, maybe you're a little bit more irritable than usual. And that's, those are great points. It's something I think, you know, really good to point out. I know sometimes, you know, you're ready to go because you got to fight with your significant other or you got to fight at work. So, you know, you want to, you want to fight, you know, and it's just, you're just ready. Um, so pause for the cause, review your motivation. I like that. You know, really trying to ask yourself, hey, is this really fucking worth it? Like, let's really look at the whole scheme of life and things that I've learned to this point. So I like that. Uh, and the next one here says, don't react immediately. Walk away from the situation. Shit, if you have the opportunity to walk away, give yourself time. You know, seriously. Especially if it's the text message kind of a thing. You don't have to respond immediately, immediately. I mean, shit. You know, you can just kind of, you know, give yourself a minute. I've written things out, things I wanted to say, and then just been like, nah, I can't do that. And every time I've just kind of gone the high road or I've just, you know, kind of been cool with it or lol did or something, I've always thought, all right, cool, you know, I'm not trying to get into it. I don't know where they're coming from, and you just don't know context. So the next one here says choose the right time. Fighting with your spouse or partner in public will rarely have a positive outcome. That's for sure. <laughs> Find a quiet place to vent your frustrations. Now, this is good. I mean, definitely choosing the right time. I mean, everything in all subjects of life, it's all about good timing. I mean, let's be real, especially here. Choosing the right time is definitely huge. Man, that's huge. Um, and there's a couple other ones on here. Next one is agree to, to disagree. Sometimes compromise seems impossible. Stay positive, hardcore, and diffuse the situation with humor. Humor is great. Humor is great. Definitely helps disarm people, diffuse situations, and also helps you bring you fucking back down to earth. Because if you can joke about something, then you can definitely uh, you can definitely connect with it. You can say, you know, fuck, you know, it's like, what are we doing here? Uh, but definitely, communicating is huge. Um, you know, and sometimes agreeing to disagree. It's a very a mature thing, or a mature thing, based on where you come from. <laughs> but but seriously, to agree to disagree is huge. I, you know, I can remember as a kid being like, what does that even mean? Agree to disagree? What the fuck? But I'm like, okay. You're just kind of going to go, okay, hey, it's cool. We just, we're just different people. And honestly, anytime you have that in your life, it's, it's kind of cool because in some way you're like, wow, like, you know, you're, you're, you're definitely not out there to change anyone or try to convince someone, but just to speak your own peace and to know that there are other people out there who really feel strongly and you can agree to disagree and still come to a compromise. You know, and just realize is this ain't worth it. That's that's fucking awesome. Uh, this next one here says, "Look in the mirror. Never minimize or cover up your mistakes. Most times, both parties contribute to the problem. Take responsibility for your part. Acknowledge your errors and work towards a compromise. Look in the mirror. That's huge. Never minimize. It's always definitely good to do some self uh, analyzing with this kind of thing. You know, because you want to you know choose your choose your battles wisely. So if you're going to go into it and realize what the fuck." I'm totally wrong. I'm the one going on. I'm being emotionally hijacked here, and I'm going just on that emotion and coming at you, you know, guns a-blazing. So definitely good to kind of take a minute and go, hey, you know, I'm responsible for my side of the street. I'm not responsible for how you respond to things or how you feel, only how I am. And, you know, you got to kind of take care of your own side of the street. So um, I think that's a that's an awesome tip there. Next one is stay calm, have respectful conversation. If the situation becomes too tense, take a break. I mean, that's huge. Stay calm. I mean, again, like the overall theme of what I'm trying to convey is like, you know, um, peace, you know, serenity. You know, we want to enjoy this time on earth, but we also want to make sure we know when to speak up. I'm not saying I just say, you know, just go with the flow, whatever. But what I am saying here is, you know, it's it's good to have this breakdown to be able to know how to uh, choose your battles. Uh, then the uh, next one here says discuss your issue in person. Not something always that is available, but, you know, definitely highly recommended. Uh, body language, facial expressions, things like that. The tone. The tone is fucking huge. Fucking text messaging, anything meaningful is full of shit. I mean, for realies. It's fucking full of shit, but, you know. So, yeah, if you can talk on the phone, you can Zoom, you can meet up, whatever, you know, definitely the way to do it because doing it via any kind of text or email or whatever the fuck, that's no good. This is no good. <clears throat> Excuse me. Drinking a lot of water. So I guess I'm just burping. Burping like a motherfucker today. 
All right, and the last two are choose your words carefully and seek help when necessary. Choose your word carefully. That's great no matter what. You know, you want to definitely listen and speak respectfully. Make sure to watch what you say. And then once words leave your mouth, you can never take them back. <laughs> That's what it says in here. <laughs> so true. We all say stu- We all say stupid shit. We all get emotional. We all think we're, you know, and then we almost like stumble over our own words and it falls out. And you're like, oh shit, I just said that. I didn't mean that. But words are powerful. But at the same time, it's good to be honest and to um, and to and to come at it and to choose your words carefully. I try to speak, uh, you know, just to share some some of uh, my own experiences. I try to be very concise. I try not to um, filibuster or talk too much and try to, you know, just explain how I'm feeling and um, be open to a conversation, you know, so we can we can get somewhere. And then the last one, it says seek help when necessary. And it kind of talks about like looking into like a therapist or like group, like group therapy or, or, or a couples therapy. And I have done couples therapy and uh, I thought it was great having a third person there to kind of help you guys like um, come to like a clearer way of communicating and just sort of working together. I know I've learned things about myself and about my partner, you know, um, and it's definitely been a good experience. Um, not for everyone, but, you know, if you if you want to try it out, I would definitely suggest it. It's good to have that sort of neutral person. And let me give you a tip here. This is a great tip. If you already have a therapist, right, like let's say you're already seeing a therapist or whatever, um, and you want to do a couples therapy, and let's say you both have therapists, right, don't go to each other's at all. Do not do that. Get a third person. I know it's a pain in the ass to find but get a motherfucking third person. I'll save you a lot of motherfucking headaches, okay? So, yeah, definitely seek help when necessary. But this, you know, this all goes into knowing when to pick your battles. And it's really just in something that I've been thinking, you know, that's really been great advice. And I've learned a lot. And, you know, as I said earlier, in the relationship category, the work category, knowing when to speak up, you know, not trying to fight every damn fight. You know, you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to be all bruised up and then you're going to just be all fucked up. So that's the self-care tip of the week. Hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to get on to some poetry here. Uh, it's a beautiful day today. Fucking I'm really excited. I'm going to have lunch with a friend here. And, um, you know, I'm going to connect with another buddy of mine from, from back home a little later. And then who knows? And then who knows? All right. So these poems, these are haiku poems. It's by a man named Richard Wright. And uh, the poem, the the collection is the last poems of an American icon, Richard Wright, and there are like about a thousand haiku in here, so I'm gonna I picked like six or seven. I'm gonna read some of them here. All right, here's the first one. I am nobody. A red sinking autumn sun took my name away. Ah, uh, it's pretty deep. I am nobody. A red sinking autumn sun. I like that. A red sinking. Autumn sun took my name away. That's really powerful. That can go a lot of different directions, but I dig how kind of like there's like that moment where you're maybe like just like looking at something or you're just like, you know, like kind of like gazing off and stuff. Um, yeah, I dig that one. All right, let's see here. The next one, flipping through the book here. All right, here it goes. The consumptive man who lives in the room next door did not cough today. I don't know why, I just really dug this one. I think sometimes we as humans can be very um, consumptive. <laughs> and I just envi- I just envision this being like in a hotel or one of those hotels that like you can rent out rooms and shit and live there. And he's like, who lives in the room next door did not cough today. So you better, you, you may want to check on him. <laughs> you may want to check on him. All right, let's see. Uh, all right. Uh, the next one is a... L- Okay, here it is. A long autumn day, a wind blowing from the west, but none from the east. I'll read that again. A long autumn day, a wind blowing from the west, but none from the east. I love that one. Very, very beautiful. It's like, you know, you can envision that. And I just love the sort of like the west and east. You know, I I can really identify. I mean... Just the whole yin yang, maybe the, just like the like differences and stuff, and the similarities, and 
me being from the east and now living in the west is yeah it's really really awesome really right on all right cool i've got three more here i got this book a couple years ago for my for my birthday it was awesome all right the sound of a train fading in the autumn hills and tomorrow too that's awesome i read that again the sound of a train fading in the autumn hills and tomorrow too that's so dope I mean come on this train obviously is coming by probably daily and this person is you know sharing it with us it's like we're not there we're not having to suffer through it every night probably is not as beautiful as it's put in this poem in this haiku but here it is fading in the autumn hills and tomorrow too I love that there's something so sort of beautiful about that you know we don't have to live there but we can be kind of like exposed to it I think that's so dope all right, so we got two more here. Again, this is Haiku, The Last Poems of an American Icon by Richard Wright. Wright with a W. This is pretty dope. Okay. Okay. Like, literally, there's like a thousand fucking poems in here. It's a thousand haiku, I should say. All right, here it goes. Suddenly mindful, the tree was looking at me, each green leaf alive. Oh man, that's so fucking dope. Here it goes. Suddenly mindful, the tree was looking at me, each green leaf alive. Suddenly mindful, oh man. What a feeling, right? What a feeling. The tree was looking at me, each green leaf alive. You just feel like that person's like in a daze, just somewhere out in nature. You know, kind of just connecting with Mother Earth. I should say Mother, Mother Nature rather. Uh, suddenly mindful. The tree was looking at me, each green leaf alive. That's so cool. Yeah, I love that outdoor shit. It's just so cool to connect the two. You know, you really just like immerse yourself somewhere and really kind of just write about it and share it with the world. All right, last one here. In the autumn air, distant mountains are dreaming of autumns to come. Oh, yeah. This one's really good. I purposely read this uh, read this one last because I just think with it being the you know fall season and being autumn, it's just perfect. In the autumn air, distant mountains are dreaming of autumns to come. Distant mountains are dreaming. That's beautiful. Very poetic of autumns to come. I mean, you know, it's like such a nostalgic time. Am I right? It's like this moderation where it's like not cold, not hot, kind of in the middle. And it leans one way some days, and maybe in the sun it's even warmer, or, you know. And you know you have a sweatshirt on, so you're not you're not cold, you're not hot, you're comfortable. There's just something comfortable, and I'm going to use the word cozy <laughs> about it. And reading some of these haiku, it just captures it, and I'm just so happy to to share it with you guys. All right, so the final portion of the True Blue podcast is the True Blue playlist where I'm going to give you a song that I've been digging and I want to share with y'all. And this song is by Deftones, and the song is called Royal. It's on the album Diamond Eyes, which I believe came out in like 2010, 2011, something like that. And this song is definitely one of their best songs. Like, hands down, one of their best. I don't like to get into, like, top tens or, like, oh, best ever, but this is on there. <laughs> this definitely is. It's the second song on this album. And it, it just kicks in right away. It's such an underrated track. Um, and it, 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 it kind of brings you like right into the deep end. It's not one of those where you kind of just like, you know, you, you kind of swim out a little. It just grabs you right away. And I love that. It's one of those songs that just, you know, takes you in. Um, and it, it's so powerful. And it's fucking heavy. What I, what I love about it, it's a great mix of old Deftones and new Deftones which some folks like older stuff because it's a little bit more, you know, kind of heavy, more, more like, more guitar driven, like in the, in the, I guess in the heavy sense, um, whereas now it's just a little bit more spacey. But um, I think, you know, both, both versions are awesome. And in this song, it just comes together. Um, and it's um, one that I, when I first heard, I just thought, oh, fuck, this is awesome. There's a part at the end where, um, where uh, the uh, where the drummer uses the bell on the ride cymbal and it kind of like takes you away and it's it's so dope because no other Deftone song um, 
where the where the bell on the right symbol is used so prominently and it's just it's so dope and then the the very last part of the song is probably the heaviest part and this is what i love about it i love these songs that just are just balls out they're just so fucking heavy um and at the lyrics at the end of the song are are, are awesome this is one of those uh one of those uh really just the way it like lines up so he says take me i'll light you up take me up how fucking dope and it's super heavy at that point the way everything lines up with like the drums and shit and you know it's just uh it's so dope and i'm so happy to share this this is one of those deftone songs i'm telling you is fucking awesome whether you're old or new deftones this is right in the middle and it's it's uh definitely one of their best songs a very underrated song it's the second song on diamond eyes called royal again the fucking take me i'll light you up take me up it, again so fucking heavy uh but so 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 deftones you know a great a great mix deftones is one of those bands where you just think a great mix um so yeah check that out i'll be sharing that on instagram and probably on fucking um on twitter and shit and i will put it to i will of course add it to the true blue playlist so i'll be happy to um happy to share that um, so cool. So hey, that's it, everyone. Session mall fucking twenty. Session twenty. We did it. We made it to twenty. Twenty twenty. So um, yeah, thanks for hanging in there with me. You know, trying to build some momentum with doing this podcast. Um, I'm feeling good today. Here we are. We're rock and rolling. So thanks for like chilling with me. I'm gonna go have lunch with one of my homies. Probably shave. You know what I'm saying? Probably shave. I mean, know what I'm saying. But hey, everyone, have a great fucking week. Thanks for chilling with me again. I am Zach Sucardi, True Blue uh, Podcast. Find me at Podcast True Blue on social media. God bless. Take care.